You're getting good at this. Too good. Exciting news! I'll start with the bad news. The bad news is I opened up my weather app neurotically for the, oh, 300th time since this whole hay ordeal has started this week. We have Joel, our friend Joel, lined up to bale hay tomorrow, and I have the wrapper. He is like busy morning, noon, and night with his wrapper because everybody's trying to get their hay off before the rain that was planned for Sunday. So I refresh it first thing this morning and I'm like, sure enough, 70% all day Saturday when we have the baler booked or the wrapper booked. I texted Cody this morning and I'm like, I'm so sorry, but do we have any other options? So he said, the only opening I have is 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, which is Friday morning, which is when we were going to bail. So we texted Joel and said, Joel, can we bail today to this afternoon? Today's Thursday. He said, yes. So change of plans. We are bailing today and wrapping first thing in the morning to hopefully beat this rain. Very exciting. You enjoy looking at perfection? <laughs> huh? It is very nice. Joel just showed up, so he has started bailing. Can you see him? So I think the scoop is Mark is going to load Jess. Jess will have the tractor, he'll, she'll have the 3130 on with a hay rack. Uh, Mark's going to stack in the field and load her up and then she's going to come and I'm going to unload where we're going to wrap tomorrow morning. Uh, we want to keep the traffic kind of at a minimum because this fourth cut's already growing. I'm going to go out and see what this uh, hay looks like. Mark says it's still a bit wet. Well, let's see the damage to this hay. Oh, it feels dry. Really dry. Comes Joel. to make a bail. It's a very distinct it's smell. I feel like I smelled that before. <laughs> what, hay? No, it's like... Old hay? It smells like, like, uh, 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 croutons. It smells like Cro buttered croutons. Oh. So here's a big chunk. So supposedly if you twist it, it should break after a couple. Or one. <laughs> Does that show if it's like dry uh, enough or whatever? It doesn't whatever? smell like nice hay. It smells like croutons. I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't about. smell like croutons. It smells like it used to be good hay and now it's... I'm trying to get like the really in between piece. Is it still damp? Um, like right in the core maybe? but it's still breaking. So Danny always said if you could twist it and it broke, it's probably dry. Okay. Oh, there we go, that took a little bit more. Dad figures like the big chunks like this will be, uh, will be still a bit wet. Yeah. So Joel's baler is the bigger ones. Oh my goodness, he did pink straight. <laughs> Oh, I love them! Oh my god! I wonder if it's a breast cancer thing. Because sometimes there's like pink wrap for breast cancer. So, yeah. Oh, look who it is. Sit. Good girl.
Oh yes. Oh oh. oh. Well, I'm just waiting for Jess to empty the first load. Now, Joel's baler, uh, granted it's a lot bigger, doesn't have the accumulator table. So the good thing about Danny's baler is Mark can pick up quite a few bales in one spot. So it makes his job a little more efficient. Uh, my job doesn't change, it doesn't matter because I'm just unloading the wagon. However, the bales are bigger and way more, there's way less of them. So uh, there's some good and bad parts of it. I'm at the point where I don't care as long as it's not on my field just begging to be rained on because that's what happens with hay when it's cut and it's at the Brock Residence. So this is where we're going to be stacking. Uh, the baler, the wrapper guy is going to come and Cody, I shouldn't call him wrapper guy, Cody, my wrapper, is going to set up here and we're going to go along last year's bales. We haven't even used, I've used a couple of these last year, it was more for the beef cows. Uh, the round bales are okay, but they're really hard to feed in the, the barn across the road when I put it in the center alley. It's just hard to get it off and and uh, off the roll, so the square bales just work a lot nicer over there. Um, so I might sell these, actually, to maybe, I don't know, Jamie or Belinda or whoever needs hay. It's nice to have some on hand, but it should get used up shortly. And they were the ones last year that got rained on, so that's why I'm really, really, really leery of hay, baling hay and waiting for a wrapper because we were literally uh, wrapping this in the rain last year.
We just finished. Do you have any we more are water? Done, boys. No, well, tomorrow we're done. We have to wrap it. We're done. We had part. 70 bales. A couple were so kind wet. of rescue bales, and then the last ones, of course, are a little, a little, the little. Gross. There's a baby. There's a baby. It's an early day. What is it? 5:30. Yep. 5:30. So we'll see you guys at eight tomorrow morning. So homie. Good morning, everyone. Cody is on his way to wrap our hay. It is about quarter to eight. What I have to do is I want to just, I just want to measure, it's really windy. Ugh, it's going to be really, no, really loud. Uh, what I want to do is walk out, pace out where those bales are going, just to make sure we have, I kind of need to know where to start the bale pile. So I'm gonna do that right now. Carissa's feeding for me. I got her to come in today just in case all, you know what, breaks loose. Uh, so she's just feeding now with the telehandler and then I'm gonna have to borrow the telehandler from her. Oh, she just, she just messaged me. She's all done with the telehandler. All right, so let's get this show on the road, shall we? This is like the perfect drying day. <laughs> it's windy and low humidity. Murphy's Law, once again. thing with these bales I got Joel to put in all the knives in the baler uh, and then if if there is a chance I can throw this in the TMR then I can I can use it in my feed rations in case I do run short on the actual cho chopped hay because uh, it just depends what fourth cut does so when you use the knives on these great big bales there's a lot of weight in here Mark has the three pronged uh, tines on his loader but I have the two and it does get the more you start lifting them they really start to lose their shape every time you put your prong in here it just kind of like makes a bigger hole bigger hole and then the bales get a bit floppy so uh the least amount of kind of handling before the wrapper the the best because you don't want these you don't want the bales to start really um putting weight on those strings so anyway but it'll be nice i think it'll be i think it turned out not bad and it smells, it doesn't smell terrible. Lots of leaves. So we will see. I'll get Jamie to come and do, um, once I start using this stuff, I guess I'll get him to come and drill a few uh, holes in the holes in the bales to get a good feed sample. We'll get this sampled up and then we kind of know what we're dealing with if, if I end up using it for the use at all. All right, I'm gonna go paste this out, see what we're dealing with. Well, I ended up getting a measuring tape because my pace is good for about the first 10 feet and then after that I, I figured I better. We got more than enough room here for all the bales. I think the tree line should easily, this tree line here, should easily fit the 70 bales because they're about four feet, they're four feet wide. So we figured to leave ourselves about 280 feet of room.
Well guys, there is nothing quite like a plan coming together, uh, especially after, I think this took us, we cut last Wednesday, Wednesday, seven, eight. This took us nine, day, nine days to make dry hay. I'm feeling really relieved that it's all, all wrapped and under cover. Today, this is, mer this is literally my life. It is the perfect, hay drying day today. It's just like, hello wound, let me just put some salt on that. And of course the rain has like totally disappeared for tomorrow. So it doesn't matter, it feels like it doesn't matter what we do. It's never the right thing. <laughs> but the hay is done. Joel just texted me, made sure that the uh, bale sizes were okay. These bales have to be between six and six and a half feet to go in that wrapper. So he was always up and he was always uh, in and out of his tractor just measuring those bales. So it's just really, everybody's just looking out for me. It feels, it's just, I feel really special. So yeah, here's the cool thing about this wrapping machine is he can actually go, he can kind of make turns. So we had a little tiny line of bales here from last year and he just did an S curve around it. Here, I'll show you here. So yeah, so we had a line up to there. So instead of like wasting field, he just turns the machine and went around it like a snake. So yeah, here's our bales. I think what I wanna do now is I have a, a tiny little bale. It was like the last bale in the baler that we kind of just spit out as is. So it's a really small bale. I wanna know how it's gonna mix if I was to use it in my feed mixer. Uh, so I'm gonna put a little bit in the mixer right now, put a little corn silage and a little bit of haylage with it and see if those bales will work because Joel used all his knives on that baler. I'm just curious if I can get away with not having to use that hay chopper on this hay. And actually that hay is from the new seeding which is still kind of wet and gross. Um, so it'll be like worst case scenario and if it works then, then all that line of bales gives me a huge options when it comes to feeding my ewes this winter if I run out of haylage. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do that with you guys right now. Let's see what hay looks like when it's actually made into a mix. <laughs> put about mm, 100 kgs of the hay and maybe 50 kgs of corn silage just to see how it'll mix. Mixed really nice. As for feeding it out, when I do put dry hay in the ration, um, the feed cart takes a bit longer to, to uh, expel it just because it kind of rolls a bit um, instead of just nicely, like the chopped, when it's chopped like this, it just comes out like butter. Um, but it does take a little bit more to get this out. However, it doesn't rope. It's not roping around my auger. It's not doing anything. So the, the, um, the actual size, particle size of this stuff is gonna work out really nice. Um, I, I think the only thing that'll be the, the, the determining factor is maybe how wet it is. So now these, this is from the new seating and the new seating was underwater, you saw that. So we weren't even gonna use these bales. Uh, but I thought I'd just bring it in and just put little sprinkles of it, but I don't know. I might not even because look at this. This is what I was afraid of. Like that's a big chunk of mud. 
and that could kill a ewe. That could, that could carry listeriosis. I might just put this in the manure pile. I just don't want to risk any of my ewes getting sick. I just wanted to test it to see how it would feed and it did feed out really quite nice. So from the field to the feed bunk, that is how we make dry hay. Really thankful for all the people that help us do hay and get us get it all off the field. Anyway, it is Friday. My sister's here doing books, so I want to go help her for a little bit. And Mark is spreading manure. So yeah, life goes on. Hay for me stops the world. Like, I don't even know what's going on. So now I have to rejoin civilization. Thank you so much for being here and putting up with our hay shenanigans. And we've still got one more cut if this wasn't enough drama. So stay tuned for that in another month. Have a good one. Take care, you guys.